Hey, behind me, 2013 Jaguar, sorry, Jaguar XF. It's got a 3.0 V6 in it. Um, the 3.0 engine and the 5.0 uh, V8 um, Jaguar Land Rover engines are known for timing chain issues. Um, several things can go wrong with them. I'll go over those in just a second. Just a little introduction to this channel. Um, unlike normal YouTubers, this is not going to be a, every Friday you get a video or every Monday at 7 p.m. you get a video. Uh, they're not going to come out with a, a, a cadence like once a week. Um, I got a full-time job, a couple kids. So you're going to get these videos uh, as I can make them. But I will promise you this. Um, any car that you see me start to work on, you're going to see it finished. I guarantee it. 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 So by the end uh, of this video series, you're going to see this thing run. So what's wrong with this? Well, I got it for 5300 bucks. It's worth somewhere around sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars $17,000 range. Um, I got it with, uh, the seller says, engine needs work. Still starts, but it was running rough. It appears that the timing chain jumped. Uh, I Before disconnecting the battery, I looked at all the codes. There's nine codes, and these are pretty telling. P16, camshaft and crankshaft correlation sensor A, bank 1. Uh, actually, let me back up a little bit. The V6s and V8s have banks. So bank 1 is cylinder 1, 2, and 3 on a V6, and bank 2 is uh, 4, 5, and 6. On a V8, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so bank two is the higher number of cylinders, bank one is the lower number. Splits the V. So P16, camshaft and crankshaft correlation sensor A, bank one, that's probably the intake camshaft sensor, bank one. P17, camshaft and crankshaft correlation uh, sensor B, bank one, so that's probably the exhaust camshaft sensor. Uh, P300, that's a random multiple cylinder misfire detected. P301, cylinder 1 misfire. 302, cylinder 2 misfires. 303, cylinder 3 misfire. And you got P0342, that's the camshaft position, position sensor A, bank 1, circuit low input. P0367, camshaft position sensor B, bank 1, circuit low input input and then p1315 persistent misfire all those are pretty telling we have a problem on the bank one um we have two timing chains uh that both meet at the crankshaft but then they split off into the the two different parts of the v um so this is telling me we have a problem with the driver side bank one so we're going to be focusing on that uh what i will do is I'm going to take off this bumper and the whole uh, structure behind it. Us car guys affectionately call that the front clip. I'm going to move all that so one, I have space to work and two, it's just easier for you uh, to see. Worst case scenarios in this is a uh, timing chain on cylinders one, two, and three broke and the, the pistons hit the valves. The, the, most engines nowadays are interference engines. That means if it gets out too far out of time uh, intake or exhaust valve will be open and as that piston comes up in the cylinder it hits it and bends it and you no longer have compression you need compression you need fuel and you need ignition like spark uh, to have the cylinder run correctly you miss any one of those things it's not going to run right um, so the worst case scenario timing chain on cylinder one two and three broke and the pistons hit the valves or the timing chain slipped several teeth uh, I got far out of time and the pistons hit the valves, so like the time chain could still be intact, but it just slipped a bunch of teeth for numerous different reasons. Um, best case scenarios is the time chain slipped only a couple teeth and it's running rough because it's out of, out of time, uh, but it didn't skip enough to have the pistons contact the valves. Um, think of like uh, drag race cars, how you hear a, a blub, 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 very lumpy cam. It could just be out of time, just enough to make it not run smoothly. Um, there's also a timing chain guide bolt that can break on these things and if the bolt breaks it can allow a lot of slack in the chain and, and the same thing it, it could not get far out of time but just enough uh, where it doesn't run smoothly uh, here's a picture of this is a Land Rover V8 but same design engine um, you can see here uh, where the red arrow is pointing with the circle where a bolt broke 
and the guide is now resting up against the engine. Another thing that can happen uh, with these is the Time Machine tensioner punched through where it presses on a guide. Uh, here's a picture of that. So you see the, the tensioner, it's hydraulically pressurized with the oil system as the car is running. And the surface area, the diameter of the tensioner, uh, is a, it's a steel piston pushing against an aluminum guide. And you can see right here where it just basically made a divot and punched right through it. That'll also cause a lot of slack in the timing chain. So we're going to be looking for that. But uh, first thing before I do anything, once again, front fascia's coming off, front clip's coming off. We're going to put the cylinders one, two, and three, one at a time, at top dead center. And I'm going to do a cylinder leak down test. And when I get to that, I'll show you what that's all about. Okay, the front uh, fascia's off, headlights are off. I was going to pull the whole front clip, but it's really just not necessary. Um, after removing the uh, radiator support and the uh, fan, I, I've got more than enough room to get in here, turn the engine, do what I need to do. So this is where we're going to stop for uh, pulling off the front end. And I'm also going to skip the, uh, the compression test. I'm going to skip that because if you look in this cylinder, over uh, bank of cylinders over here, I have the supercharger uh, cover off. This is really dark, carboned up over here, and this is nice and clean. This has been running just fine. Problem is over here. Uh, if you look down in here, I don't know if this is going to show you. Let me zoom in. Let me, get a, let me get another light in here. Come on, baby, focus. Focus. This valve closest to me has a uh, gap in it it's bent so our problem is on this side over here the passenger side so i'm going to continue taking stuff apart uh and get back with you okay i got the uh supercharger off uh and you can see this much better now um this valve down here you can see a gap it is not seated, so that is definitely bent. Um, and this one is seated for some reason, or at least it looks like it. Kind of a little bit surprised over that. Um, I would have figured that it would have bent both the valves the same way, but uh, who knows? Um, we're going to have to take a little bit more of a look at this. Um, I'll probably turn the engine over and see if I can get this valve, turn it over by hand and see if I can get this valve to move. But I'm pretty sure it is stuck like that. So, next steps. Uh, like I said, I'm going to turn this engine over by hand. Uh, just with the crankshaft pulley down there. And then we're going to have to start taking the valve covers off. This side is fairly easy, relatively speaking. Uh, this side, there's no room. To get to this thing, I'm going to have to take, somehow, I'm going to have to take this uh, fuse box and fuse box house, I will call it, uh, off. So I have enough room to get down in here and uh, get this valve cover off. That will be next. Okay, I got the uh, right hand side body cowling, whatever you want to call it, the relay box's little house out. Um, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit here. To do that, I had to take the wipers off and all this cowling uh, just so I could get this uh, <coughs> cable out of there, all that wire bundle. Still not a lot of room, but there's enough room now. So I'm going to work on getting all these wires off, laying them off to the side and getting this valve cover off. That includes taking the coil packs out, one, two, three coil packs on this side, of course, one per cylinder, and getting the fuel rail off. And getting the injectors out i'll show getting the injectors out uh, there's a special tool that you gotta clamp onto the injector and basically slide hammer them out of there i know what you're thinking i've done a lot of work and i really haven't shown a lot how this comes apart but i'm trying to keep this video fairly short do know that uh just to replace the valve cover gasket on this car is a 14 out that both of them is a 14 hour uh, book time at the dealership 14 hours to replace just your valve cover gaskets that's crazy so obviously I can't show everything um, you're just gonna have to kind of follow along a little bit here and it's 
more of a little story than it really is a how-to video. But uh, anyway, wiring harness, uh, coil packs, fuel rail, injectors. Those are going to come out so I can get this uh, valve cover off here. Okay, the wiring harness is off. All this is disconnected. Oh, by the way, the Bank 1 um, camshaft sensors, uh, here's one right here. And here's another right here. So these were the, the two giving me a code that um, there was an issue of a correlation between the position of the camshafts behind here and the crankshaft. So anyway, I took the wiring harness off, took the um, ignition coils off, took the fuel rail off. And now you can see the top of the injectors. This is a fuel injector right here. This is a direct injected engine. Uh, old fuel injected cars uh, had injectors right here by the intake and would uh, put the gas in that way. This uses like, you know, over 2,000 pound PSI fuel. It's got high pressure fuel pumps. Uh, it's pretty common these days. One, it gives you a little bit more stratified uh, fuel spray. Better gas mileage, a little bit more power. Anyway, uh, to get these out, they're kind of sort of pressed in there. You use this guy. This is a special tool. Um, it's got this uh, the jaws on the end of it, and then you put this down, and it clamps onto the fuel injector. And then it's got a hook on this side that I can uh, hook a chain or something to and uh, pull from. So you can see this here. I got the O-rings off. I'm literally just going to put this guy. Trying to do this one-handed is a little difficult. Okay, I'm gonna put this guy right there. Slide that down. Uh, collar's down and on. All right, now I'm just gonna get a chain and uh, basically slide hammer pull this thing out. So here's my ghetto slide hammer rig. I hope you like it. <laughs> anyway, um, this is the injector, and I might have shown that you Let me pull this call it off here I might have shown that you grab it uh, from the end uh, you don't do that you you grab it from here this thing will pinch down like so and you want it uh, something more substantial so back here and then you just uh, get some slack in the chain and pull it out uh, that's number one of six five more to go How you do it got the rest of the fuel injectors out on this side I still have uh, this side to do but uh, I know that this is our bad side so I'm, I'm working over here first uh, I'm gonna put a new timing chain kit on this thing regardless um, just an updated one less prone to failure uh, so hopefully at this point the worst news is this bank this is bank one over here um, is the only bad one, and this is this side. I'll, I'll find it still in time. I'll still put a new timing chain, guys, tension, and everything over on that side. But I'm not going to take that cylinder head off and repair any valves. This one I'm going to have to. When I pull the valve cover off, uh, you can see this chain here flopping around. It's not even on the exhaust camshaft, um, and there's a piece of guide bent. It was just chilling right there. So. We're going to continue taking this off, getting this exhaust manifold off while it's in the car is going to be a bear, but I'll figure it out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue taking this off. I'll get this other side off and the, and the valve cover, and uh, I'll get back with you. All right, this is where this part of the series is going to end. This will be part one. I'm going to end the video here because i got to... Uh, Get some crankshaft alignment tools. I thought that the uh, tools for the 5.0 version of this engine um, would fit, but they don't. So I'm going to have to order those because um, I need to lock it uh, in order to get this crankshaft pulley off. But you can see here I've got the um, front cover off of the, the timing chain cover here. And you can see... This guide, you can just see the metal. That's that's not good. You should have some plastic guide on here. 
it's even uh, taking a little bit of a chunk out of it here. So once I take all this off, this chain should be riding up here. And, it, and of course it's not, it's just loose down there. It's totally messed up. Anyway, um, once I get all this off, I'm going to have to uh, check the oil sump and everything for any bits of metal. Hopefully I can get them all accounted for. And I got some PB blasters sitting on the uh, power steering pulley. This has to come off in order to get to a couple of the bolts to get this timing upper timing cover off on the driver's side. This side is good. Uh, this chain's nice and tight. Uh, I don't see anything uh, messed up. So this cylinder head's probably going to stay on. This cylinder head's going to come off and get reworked. And the whole engine will get a new timing chain, guides, tensioners, uh, the whole shebang. So anyway, until next time, thanks for watching.